Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. And today I bring you back to Narromine, 40 kilometres west of Dubbo, New South Wales, for the Narromine Car Show, Charity Motor Show and Shine. So it's time now for you to find your favourite chair, sit back and relax, as I bring you this week's Classic Restos on the Road. Small country towns rely on and look forward to things outside of the square and one thing is events in the town. At around three and a half thousand people living here, a car show is a big deal and rightly so. There are over 65 members belonging to the Narrow Mind Car Club. It's been established 18 years and enthusiasts will drive from outskirt places such as Dubbo, Forbes, Cobar and even Coonamble. And as they say here in Narromine, if it's got wheels, bring it. And as we make our way through, how are you Bronte? I'm good thanks Fletch, how are you? Wonderful, what a day. It's yeah, beautiful, nice and sunny compared to what we've had. Absolutely, I think it's uh, the biggest show to date with uh, a record amount of uh, attendance here, which is just wonderful for Narromine. Yeah, that's pretty exciting being my first show with this many showing up, it's really good. Yeah. Good on you, Bronte. And uh, speaking of your first show, 1985 Datsun Ute. This is this is beautiful. This is this is your this is your work, right? Yeah, it is. It's um yeah, it's pretty special to me. I've always wanted one, so I'm very lucky to be able to have one. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And I heard uh, it's your birthday today. Um yes, it is my birthday, Fletch. Thank you for noticing that. <laughs> 19 today. There you go. 19 years of age, got a classic ute. I think this is awesome. And we've got to keep going here. You just have to share with us what you do for work. Um, I'm an auto electrician apprentice, so I'm in my third year. Um, so, yeah, not long to go for that. So that's really exciting. So definitely come in handy with my little car. Auto electrician, third year. Got to admire that. Some of the new cars, a bit hard to get your head around. Yeah, definitely. Um, but it's good. Just always a challenge. That's what I like. I wanted to challenge myself. So that was definitely... Definitely what I wanted to do. Some of the old cars are good. They've only got about nine or ten wires in the in the in the full harness, haven't they? That's exactly right. Yeah, it's pretty easy. This little one wasn't too hard to get my head around, so it was definitely good. That's awesome stuff, Bronnie. That is so so good. Okay, now uh, time for the Ute here. Uh, 1985 Datsun Ute. Done a few little modifications. I like what you've done because you haven't gone too crazy. You, you've you've kept the old girl uh, fairly original in most ways. Yeah, yeah. I definitely wanted to be able to drive it, and I didn't want to have to park it up too long when I bought it. So I did. I I always knew that I didn't want to do too many modifications. I definitely want to get the interior up to scratch because that's something that I, I'm very particular about. But um, yeah, under the bonnet, she's um, done a little bit just to make it a little bit of my own and then, yeah, yep. just try to keep it. Isn't it good too that uh, you can get new parts for these as well? Like I've noticed the uh, the scuff plates um, on the top of the sill there, brand new sitting there. First thing you see when you open the door, that looks really nice. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's really easy to access stuff for it. Um, from Datsun Parts Shop is where we got a lot of our stuff. Yep. Um, and we just sort of went through and just decided what we needed and we just ordered it, you know, as much as we could. You know, we went through and we did a fair few orders through them as, you know, sometimes I ordered one thing and I forgot the other. So, but they were definitely yep. really, really good with us. And Bronte, when you found the ute, what sort of condition was it in? Uh, it was already painted. It was in like pretty good nick, but the interior definitely needed a lot of love. Yeah. Um, so I pulled the dash out. I got that sent away and fully resurfaced and um, new steering wheel. Um, we painted pretty much everything black because I just wanted it all blacked out. But yeah, we definitely needed love. I hope it went to a good auto electrician. Uh, yes, I definitely made sure it did. <laughs> okay, now engine up front, a couple of SUs sitting there and a set of extractors. Yes, yeah, no, um, they definitely make it go a little bit better and a little bit louder, which is what I like. Yep. And very light. I mean, there's just no weight in these things, is there? No, definitely not. It feels sometimes too light. You turn a corner a little bit too quick. And but what a cool, fun car. It's uh, bright in the paintwork. It looks fantastic. Uh, manual gearbox there, four or five speed? Uh, four speed, yeah. yeah. 
there, there. She's even kept the traditional four speed going on there. I think that's awesome, Bronte. Yeah, no, I love the four speed. I think it's really cool to have, just nice and traditional. Yeah, as you said. The interior looks great. Uh, it looks comfortable. Uh, the, the, the seats, a factory look there as well. I, I like the dashboard, the layout there. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's just a real sweet thing, this, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. It's um, definitely beautiful to look inside. I love it. Who's your work? Give them, a, give them a quick plug. So my work is the Andrews Auto Electrics and my boss is Wayne and Ange Osborne and they are so lovely to work for. I'm so grateful for them taking an opportunity, yeah. putting me on and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I'm so lucky to work with the boys that I work with. They're so lovely and welcoming to me. They've never had an issue with them. Right? I'm just so, I'm so um, happy for you and uh, to be third, a third year and almost uh, out of your time and to take on that trade. Congratulations with everything. Hope it goes well. I know it's going to and uh, well done on this uh, awesome little ute here. Thank Thank you, Fletch, so much. It really means a lot um, to be able to do this interview and, you know, to meet you today. So I'm really, really grateful. Yes. Thank you. My pleasure, Bronnie. Thank you. Thank you so much. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified Service Network. This next car behind us, pardon the pun, is gold. Richard, how are you, mate? Good, Fletch. How are you going? Good, good. 68 HK Brougham. Need we say any more? What a, what a fantastic example. Yeah, very, very tidy motor car. Yeah, nice example. Now, Richard, I'm shot here on, on, two, on, on two levels. Shot on the first one where if I ask you if it's for sale, I know you're going to say no. And if you did say yes, I wouldn't be able to afford it. I know, I know you're not going to get rid of this car. No, not in a hurry. I think I'll own this one for a long time. Yeah. Okay, before we go any further, uh, there's a 55 Volkswagen beside us as well. Uh, you've put a lot of uh, time and effort into that too. Yes, yeah, I built that 15 years ago for Dad. It's the first restoration I've done, that one, yeah. The 55 Beetle next to us, that is definitely a story for another day. But behind us, this Brougham. Now, 307, 68 model. They, these cars back in their time, they were really uh, the flagship of Holden, weren't they? They were. They were trying to, I suppose, keep with the fair lane. But, um, um, yeah, big, big, nice, luxurious motor car. Yeah. I've got to say, the, uh, the, the Chevy 307 is such a, a smooth product. Even out the exhaust, they've got a smooth note. You wouldn't even know it's running. And the gearbox changes, you wouldn't even know it changes gears. They are so smooth. They are. It was back in an era too where Australians were really getting used to these big cars with features. Um, okay, we look at the features of these cars and they're coming standard on, on a Kia of today. But it was back in a time where we had some opulence, we had some bright work, stainless steel, chrome, we had a long car, we had a V8 engine up front. They, they really made a statement back then, didn't they? They did. You could even um, power windows. It was an option now, it's just power windows and everything. But yeah. This is a manual window car, as, as you said, but power windows was an option. We had neighbours in the early 70s uh, with one of these very cars, uh, 307 powdery blue. 
um, paint colour with a beautiful brocade trim, power window car, and you know, being the age of seven or eight years of age and going for a drive in this thing, I can still remember the smoothness taking off from the traffic lights, and you could you could feel the torque in your back as it took off. Yes, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Now the story of this car, Richard, I, I know you have one. Want to share it with us? Um, so I went to buy a chrome mould for a wagon I'm building, and he didn't have the chrome mould, but he said I've got a Brahm, so I went and looked at that and bought it instead. So I got the chrome mould, it just came with a lot of extras. <laughs> it was a bit of a bonus. It was, yeah. yeah. Um, so Phil Leary at Peak Hill had it, so his old man sold the car new. They then got traded in 11,000 miles. His old man bought it back and didn't want to sell it. He went across the Nullarbor in it, and then Phil parked it up since well, 20, 30, 37 years now it's been parked up. Would you like to take it across the Nullarbor? I'd love to do it. Yeah, yeah I'd love to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Every stone chips a trophy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Richard, the thing is with this car, you look inside it, it's brand new. We're not talking uh, an interior that's been reconditioned. This is yeah. this is straight out of Holden in 1968. Yeah, but whoever put it, put it together, it hasn't been touched since. That's right. And 36,000 genuine miles. You you look at the speedo, the, the first thing that comes to mind is that it's gone round to the zeros and done another 36,000 miles, but not in not in this case. No, no it's, it's 36 genuine thousand miles. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. Even underneath the vehicle, it's just spotless. There's not a mark, not a dent. It's sort of a bit scary to drive at times. You really hang on to it when you drive and you don't want nothing to happen to it. Still a good car to drive? Beautiful, beautiful to drive. Very smooth, as you were saying. Very smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I don't want to sound like a scratch record, but I, I, I can't get over technology. I, I think it's incredible to think that, and I have said this before, we're talking late 60s and we're, we've come 50-odd years. Um, from 1968, if you went back 50 years... It's just not the same ratio, is it? No, not at all. They've done so much with the technology on cars now, but it is so awesome to drive a new car than step into this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the thing, to think that a, 19, a car from 1968 in 2021 can still feel so good. Yeah. It's not as though you get in the thing and the visibility's bad or, you know, there's rattles and clunks and an uncomfortable car. To think it's come all these decades and just be so good. Yeah, well, I suppose 50 years isn't that long ago, Fletch. No, of course not. No. No, 50 years, no. No, good. Just keeps us young, doesn't it, Richard? It does, it does indeed. The paint, before we go any further, original for 1968 with just some signs of over the boot lid of some fade, right? Yeah, a little, little fade in one corner sort of shows you that it's original paint. Okay. Yeah. The sun visor, what have you done there? Uh, he had a new old stock one in a box. He couldn't find the original one, so he gave me the brand new one and just scuffed it back and painted it. I had to paint it a few times to make it suit the vehicle, but yeah, it come up well. When we lift the bonnet, We've got original hoses here. Yep, he gave me original hoses, original exhaust system. Um, they've still got the part numbers on the hoses. It's nice to see the AC Delco sticker there, original on the air cleaner as well. Yeah, it looks, looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is still nice to know too that there are many Holden certified service centres around Australia that will still take care of your Holden and of course still use AC Delco parts. This is winding the clock back, Richard. It is indeed, yeah, my word, yeah. Richard, there's no doubt about it, you are a dead set Holden legend. And because of that, I'd like you to accept this limited edition Holden Legends cap, thanks to Holden Certified Service and AC Delco Parts. Wow, thank you, Fletch. That's great. Thank you, Classic Restos, and thank you, Holden. That's nice. That's good. Now, yeah, making our way through this wonderful show here at Narromine, Mac, are you having fun? I, yes, I am, Fletch. I'm definitely having fun. Been a, good, been a great day. What year model is she? 1926. 1926 Buick. How far have you travelled? Uh, about 14 k's. So, so you left a few days ago, right? I did, certainly. But I've, I trailed the rim, mate. I didn't drive her in. She's too, <laughs> she's too slow. What a beautiful old girl, eh? 1926 Buick. Now, it's got to come with a story. What can you tell us? Well, what happened, I put my parents for Macint McIntyre's North Beach store this side and my grandfather around Byrock's store the other side. Uh, it was just a sedan and I made it into a... To a uh, a cab, I suppose a delivery truck if you want to call it that. Yeah. So I had to put something on it, so I put my mum and dad's on this side and my grandfather on the other side to give it a bit of character, that's all. No other reason. Talk about typifying Australiana. Yep, that's right, exactly, exactly. So when you acquired the vehicle, uh, was she in a bad way, oh, Macca? Yes. Was, no, it was a shocking way. It was just, it was just, a, just a rusty, rusty relic, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got it down to the rails, obviously. You did a, a full ground-up restoration. I had to, yes. Full, full, full ground, yeah. Every, everything, every little part, yes. And how did you go finding parts for it, Macca? Well, what happened, I, I bought a trail load full of, two, two trail loads full of stuff uh, from, from a bloke down the coast, mm -hmm. uh, a Buey parts, and just, just made, made a lot of them as well. You had yeah. to, you know. Just uh, You can't get them all, but anyway, that's, that's what I would have done. I love the, uh, I guess, the uh, authenticity of the vehicle as well, uh, by the... 
sign writing you've done here as well, I, I reckon that's that's really nice. Well, we had to put something on it to say, it gives a bit of character, yeah. and uh, you know. So Macra 1926 vehicle, uh, a very agricultural by today's standards. What what is it like to drive? Do you, do you actually you get a lot of enjoyment out of it? You do, but you've got to work hard. You really got to work hard because the poor crash gearbox, mechanical brakes, uh, and, you, and the gears you always grade them. You, know, you can't help but grade them. That's the way they were them days. You've got to drive them slow. But, you know, poke along steady, eh? Do you think back in the day that the guys that recently just had come from horses drove this and thought it's hard work, or do you think they would have slipped into possibly a a luxury bracket? Mate, I don't think they would have thought they had a speed machine. But you know, I, I can get in out of town within about half an hour, it'll be half a day on a horseback, you know, so that'll be the difference in it, you know. And I guess too, uh, we, you're mentioning mechanical brakes, but prior to that, well they've really got, they wouldn't have had anything to compare to, would they? Not exactly, no, like the old wagonettes just had a handbrake, you see, so this has got a foot brake and a handbrake, so it's not, it's not a vanish, you know. Yeah. So Maka, tell us, where do you go back with classic vehicles? Probably about, uh, I, think, I think I bought it the FX Holden, in, in about uh, 72, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So I go back, you've had, a, you've had her on Classy Resto before the old girl. Uh, so I go, I go back that far, 72, I suppose, you know. But my, my, my dad owned these kind of cars too, you see. Like North Berg store, he had a Chef 4, yeah. Chef 4 truck, you know. Yeah. And, uh, What's your earliest memory of one? Well, when I was four years of age, my, my dad driving in the North Berg store in a Chef 4 truck. <laughs> You know, that, that, that was in the 50s, of course. And that stuff sticks, doesn't it? Oh, yes, it does. My word. My word. It, it definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Did it take you back to your dad's day when you drive along in this? Oh, I suppose it does a bit, yes. Yeah, but you, you've got to work harder, so you really don't think about much else but driving. Co concentrating too hard to keep, it, <laughs> keep, to keep it in the lane. Oh, it makes you an Armstrong steer, and I tell you, a big steering wheel, you need it too. Yeah. 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 I just think it's wonderful what you've done here. Uh, it's Australian legacy, isn't it? It really is. And it can be uh, depicted so well through our vehicles, our tradition. And when we, we like Macca here, going back with family stuff, like that, yeah, that's just, uh, that's very precious stuff, isn't it? Oh, my word, my word, very precious, you know. Mm. Yeah, my word. All right. Well, mate, um, considering this is another guy, time to time, people on Classic Rest Days, oh, don't, don't want to talk, I can't talk. Well, for a bloke that can't talk, he just did really well. <laughs> oh, yeah, good on you, mate. <laughs> Bloody good on you. <laughs> and and, uh, and it, it's been a pleasure interviewing you uh, with the Buick here. Uh, but before we do go, um, I should have uh, asked this question about three weeks ago. Um, what powers it up front? Uh, it's, it's a 23 and a half horsepower. That, that's it. 23 and a half horsepower. My Toro ride on Mower at home is 22 and a half horsepower. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, well, so, so is mine. Mine's 22 horsepower as well. You, 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 yeah. you haven't got blades on a base plate spinning around <laughs> underneath. <laughs> probably, probably, probably that's what I need. <laughs> See, it's all about, it's, it's really interesting when we, we're digressing here, but we talk about horsepower figures. But back in these days, uh, they were very torquey. It wasn't so much the horsepower number, it was the torque and the gearing that got you through, wasn't it? Mate, they're all bloody Clydesdales in there. Yeah. Mm. The massive, massive amount of power on the old girl. Yeah. Pull a bend out of the river. <laughs> Pull the bend out of a river. All right, Macca, take care of yourself, buddy, and uh, great catching up with you here in Narromine. Thank you very much, Fletch. It'd be nice to meet you too. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Good on you, Fletch. When I was a kid, I loved cars. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them, and racing. Hand built with a stainless steel roof. It won the Monte Carlo Rally four times. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. In 71, this was the fastest four door car in the world. Insurance? Shannon's, of course. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. And if you own a Classic, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And have you discovered the Shannon's Club yet? It's Australia's largest automotive online hub. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. 
there's just something about getting around this great country of ours. The simplest things we take for granted. It's on our front doorstep, under our noses. We just have to get out there and get it. Sometimes it's not about the five-star hotels. Just getting back to a basic, calmer way of lifestyle just says so much. We have long country roads that take us to many hundreds of destinations around Australia. We love places like Narromine. It's the smaller joints that often mean so much. Spend $15 on a jar of barbecue sauce at the butcher shop made by a local person and it means so much. Classic vehicles, whether it be bike, car or truck, add to the atmosphere of our geographical travelling experience. Our classics are our taxis. They take us places whenever we want them to. The bush, the wide open spaces. Life shouldn't be about living on top of each other. Out here you can spread out, smell the air, and get away from those commercial pressures that may surround you in other areas. These smaller towns have lots to offer. The people want to see you. They appreciate your business and they often rely on it. When you can, plan your trip. Make sure that your cooling system is good. Check the small things around your engine bay and your tires and go. Let's help to keep our regional towns moving. We don't have to spend a lot there, but if we all do it as enthusiasts, just think of the fun that awaits us. G'day, I'm Roz. I'm from Narromine. Um, this is our one tonner. Um, yeah, had it for about 27 years. Uh, bought it to, well, use when we bought our header for contract harvesting as our work ute. And, um, got to the point where we had to change over and put it on blocks and Steve said one day, one day we might get to do it up. Um, anyway then the son grew up a bit and said hey dad let's let's get into this chute and and restore it and sort of sort of a bit of time to think about it and um, yeah in about 03 they started to pull it all all down like bit by bit and stripped it right back to bare chassis um, yeah, cab off it, engine out, everything. It was just chassis, that's it. And yeah, this ute, um, it means everything to us. Uh, it's very special because, um, yeah, our son, James and Steve, my husband, they spent a lot of time and put a lot of love and effort into it and um, to this day, yeah, they're both, I'm very proud of both of them, um, of what they've done and we just love it. James, our son, he did all the welding on the tray, he, yeah, put that together um, by himself. He was only probably um, 16 at the time. Um, which the weld, you know, beautiful weld up, very precise. You know, you measure twice, you just don't measure once, you always measure twice to, um, to get it right. So, but, uh, you know, he's, um, he's a big major part of this restoration. It's got a HQ Statesman front. Um, it's got a 253 engine. Um, it's four speed on the floor, yep. Uh, and it sounds good. When you restore a vehicle um, like we have here, um, you know, you try and make it your own so that it's different to everyone else's. You, you want it to be different. And uh, this has got Statesman front, a GTS dash, um, checker plate tray, uh, dragway wheels. Um, yeah, a few things like that you sort of you change and it's your own then. And yeah, we love it. This wonderful Massey Ferguson tractor was bought brand new back in 1957 and is still owned by the same family today.
These are the stories, along with many others, that you find when you travel into the regional areas. And on that note, I hope that you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos, put on by the Narromine Car Club, their charity show and shine. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.